Hey, hey, flappers, welcome back. I just ran one of the most complicated combat encounters of my life. It was five casters, and while that may not sound like a lot to you, it was a big step up for me. And I could have made it so much easier with just a simple DMs tool. Flowcharts. This is something that Abria Iyengar has talked about and has spread to some other members of the D20 community, but it makes things really simple for player characters. And I got thinking, would it be that hard to make a flowchart for DMs? And the answer is no, which is what I found out trying to make a flowchart template that you guys could use. That's going to go in my Discord. Let me show you how to use it. A flowchart is going to help you in all kinds of ways as a DM. The number one thing is that it's going to make your combats faster, quicker, and more bearable for your players. The second thing is that it is going to actually make the combats more dynamic because you're going to pose yourself some questions. The little choices that happen, the little maneuvers, are going to matter to the players and they're going to matter to the NPCs that you're controlling. So we are going to just jump in and take a look at this. So I made a team of five here uh, and I named the leader Momochi and then the stat block that I used. This is an NPC from one of the manuals or modules that you can get on D&D &D Beyond and I had access to it. So I just decided to plug it in. This is basically taking Momochi's turn and compressing it into one single document that you can observe and understand. And then I found for his underlings a second stat block. This kind of inspired me to have his little monk minions be older folks who have found rebirth. This was my secondary and I made a flowchart for both of these. So the first thing you wanted to do was name it, and then you want to find a purpose. So that's the second thing you want to do. Find a purpose for each of your NPCs. A purpose can help you create a balanced encounter. For Momochi, I found that his purpose was to use the cult to attain a higher status, uh, to take out the competition, which is our heroes. If things go wrong, he's going to fight to the death. And then he's going to offer to avoid the fight by taking half of the medical supplies that the players are carrying. The next thing I did was plug in the information that I thought was useful for the flow chart, the two hits and the save DC. Two hits are gonna be basically the three main attacks. If it's a spell caster, you're definitely gonna want the spell casting attack modifier. Decide whether or not a spell caster is going to use their melee attack. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. My players don't have anything that take away spell casting, and there wasn't any situation where he wasn't gonna be able to cast spells in this encounter. I didn't put in his dagger to hit because I, I thought the spell casting modifier was the most important. The second most important thing is the save DC for spell casters. This is the spell save DC, but there are other kinds of saves for creatures, monsters, all sorts of things. Next, you have to make a decision. What will be the turning point for this character to have unfavorable conditions in a fight? So this is basically deciding when is my character going to have a sea change in the middle of a battle. And for this character, I, I made a really simple one, which is that they are below 20 HP. Some people, they might start out the battle basically in unfavorable conditions. What I did for Momochi is realize that he's an evoker. So I said that he's going to fight to the death and he's going to cast his highest power spells first. In a normal situation, he'd probably be saving a, a slot or two for counter spell, for shield, but he's going to cast his highest power spells without saving anything at this point. The first box here is for his actionable consequences to unfavorable conditions. His second box is going to be his movement for unfavorable conditions. If he's fleeing, he's probably going to be using as much as he can to run away. If he's fleeing for his actionable consequences, he may be using the dash action or misty step or something like that. So this part becomes really simple. First of all, you're going to ask a question. Your first determining question is going to be the most important. And your second determining question is going to be another more niche sort of situation. Uh, are enemies grouped up or invisible is kind of a niche situation, but it's something that you want to keep in mind. You have the spell fireball, so 
you should use it in this situation. And uh, melee range of two plus enemies, this is sort of a squishy caster. So he's going to want to get away from enemies if he can. The last box on the top is going to be your normal circumstances. The normal circumstances are just basically some ideas for what you do on your turn. Scorching Ray is a good range spell attack to do damage. Magic Missile is a good secondary range spell attack just in case you're out of level two spell slots. And then Shocking Grasp is great if you're facing someone one-on-one -on -one and you need to get out of melee range. Each of your determining questions is going to lead to a different branch of actions. Are enemies grouped up or invisible? Uh, he's going to want to use the fireball spell. Are there a bunch of enemies within melee range? He's going to want to cast Thunder Wave to get them away from him. And then Misty Step is going to be a sort of get me out of jail here. These are all going to lead to the same box, which is just using the last of your turn economy, making sure you use your movement, making sure you've used an action and then a bonus action and looking to see what your actions and bonus actions are. I didn't know during the battle that Misty Step was a bonus action, so I wasn't necessarily taking advantage of it as much as I should have been. The questions can relate and probably should relate to the purpose. Sometimes uh, your purpose might be to obtain a certain amount of items. Uh, maybe you'll be using a grapple action to wrestle that item away from someone. It's about making sure that the purpose is displayed in your combats. You want to make sure that the combat matches the purpose. So keep those purposes in mind while you're coming up with the questions for the determining factors. I also made up a flowchart just to show you how things might be different for Mary Beth, Hal, Leonard, and Enid, who are the underlings. Protect the sensei, develop the wonder of their rebirth, live for the cause, die for the cause. This is a fighting group. They will fight to the death as long as their sensei does. They will sort of flock to him and sort of surround him, keep him from being within range of people as much as possible. Inflict wounds and then force pike are going to be the main actions. Moving back, enemies concentrating that I can see, so ending concentration is a good goal. And then our enemies within five feet of the sensei, I'm gonna go ahead and cast hold person. Then you are going to use the remaining turn economy. This is the first template basically showing you everything uh, I made it so that you could fill it in with the same nomenclature as I do, and I just sort of put the information in as much as I possibly could. And then I also made a blank template. These are both going to be available on my Discord. And you might be saying, hey, I'm looking at this. This is... Uh, 1920 by 1080, this isn't going to print out well. I did realize that. I figured it might be helpful to make a specific printout that you could fill in with a uh, pen or pencil. The extra information I added is for times when it's not your turn or not your NPC's turn. So reactions is something you might want to keep in mind. Saving throws, special damage, immunities, resistances, and vulnerabilities. And then spell slots and legendary resistance charges is something you might want to keep in mind while you are noting things on paper just writing out some x's or something here this will print out onto a normal piece of paper it'll look like this it gets a little cut off but none of the important information is cut off and that'll slide right into your dm screen if you want it to that's going to be available on my discord so go ahead click the link down below join my discord this is going to be posted in the next couple days keep an eye out for that thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you next time